Crepe Louise by Jade Maitre Louise lived in a caravan on a lovely yellow hill. She loved her home. In the springtime it smelt like bees and in the summer you could hear the frogs singing when the sun rose and set. In the winter, Louise would drink hot chocolates wrapped in blankets and in the autumn she would hunt chestnuts and mushrooms and kick up great clouds of leaves with her gumboots. And all year round, Louise's mother loved to bake bread. They couldn't keep an oven in the caravan, so they had one built just next to it. Louise's mother called it her magic oven because the bread she made was so tasty. Louise's mother made crusty loaves and baguettes. She measured the ingredients, kneaded the dough and shaped it into rolls. Louise would watch her and sometimes help, getting her hands all dusty with the flour and smelling the delicious smell when their creation started to cook. One day, Louise's mother went out. I'm going to buy some butter, she told Louise. Don't go near the magic oven. Louise thought her mother said this because she might hurt herself on the hot oven or make a mess. She didn't realise her mother said this because it was magic. Louise knew she wouldn't touch the hot oven, but she did want to have a look at the latest things her mother had been cooking. So thinking that she would be very good and not touch anything, she snuck into the room and saw the rolls of dough where her mother had begun to prepare them. But Louise could not help herself to see all that delicious dough rolled into balls and ready to cook. She thought she would just have a little taste, just to see if her mother had put in enough salt. But as she swallowed that very small nibble, something strange happened. She shrank! Now Louise was very little. Very, very little. About the size of an egg, hardly larger. You see, the room was filled with so much magic from making delicious bread that the strangest things had begun to happen in it. Louise did not know, but her mother did, and this is why she said it was magic. One strange thing that often happened in the room, for example, was that her mother felt so happy when she baked that she would accidentally start singing, and the song would turn into macaroons and shower all through the room in a rainbow of biscuits. Now Louise was very little, the room where the magic oven was was a very curious place to her. The rolling pin was as big as a large Afghan dog, and the puffs of flour were like giant sand pits. Louise laughed and made a flower fairy on the tabletop. Then, still covered in flour, she ran to the seeds and dived into the bowl. They felt smooth and light, and just how you might imagine swimming in seeds feels like. Louise gave a shout of happiness and threw the seeds into the air like confetti. And just at that moment, another tiny head peeked over the edge of the bowl. It was a little girl the same size as her. Who are you? gasped Louise. Suzette, said the little girl. I am a dragonfly who accidentally flew into this room. I now look so strange. My wings are gone and I've only got two legs instead of six and two eyes instead of five. I'm a horror. A tear fell out of one of her two eyes and Louise felt so sad she gave her a hug. You look like a normal girl to me, said Louise, if not a little small. But I understand if you would prefer to be a dragonfly. Dragonflies are very pretty and it must be fun to fly. Suzette nodded and wiped away her tears. I'm sure my mother can help fix things when she comes back, continued Louise. In the meantime, what are some things you can't do when you're a dragonfly? We should do them. Suzette cheered up. I've never had a crepe, she told Louise. I've always wanted to eat one, with chocolate or honey. Then let's make one, declared Louise. There was a basket of eggs on the table. Louise and Suzette broke two of them together into a bowl. They added some flour and a big slippery piece of butter they found in a dish by the window. Then they jumped right in the mixture. They stomped and they slid, arms and legs going everywhere. They were covered in crepe, but it was really fun. Somehow all those ingredients got mixed and they had made a lovely crepe batter. At that moment, Louise's mother came back from the shops. This was a very lucky thing, as it is very dangerous to use an oven when you're a child, particularly when the oven is magic and you are the size of an egg. 
Louise's mother looked confused to see her magic oven room in such a mess, but then she heard Louise and Suzette's tiny little voices. Little mouths make voices that sound like cricket wings, hardly louder. And then she saw them there in the bowl, absolutely covered in crepe batter. Louise, what happened? her mother exclaimed. Louise explained that she had eaten the dough. Then, on seeing Suzette blush, she realised Suzette had done it too. And now we're small, Louise told her. Just like fairies, said her mother, giving her a little kiss on the top of her head. And that little kiss made a new kind of magic, and suddenly Louise was a big girl again, and Suzette a gorgeous dragonfly with deep green glittering wings. Suzette bounced and hummed in the air and sat on Louise's shoulder. Louise realised her friend still wanted to eat her crepes. So with Louise's mother's help, the three of them cooked the crepes, put them on a plate and drizzled them with honey. Then they shared them together. They were so very tasty, almost magically tasty. The best I've ever had, said Louise's mother. What shall we call them? Crepe Suzette, said Louise, laughing. But Suzette buzzed very loudly and hovered up and down near her face as though she were trying to tell her something. And then the most magical thing of all happened. She could hear that little buzzing as though it was words. And do you know what Suzette was saying in dragonfly language? Crepe Louise! Crepe Louise! The end. Thank you for reading with storyberries.com Free stories for kids.